Welcome back, Seth Bling here, and I'm on the Minecraft server. I am in this cave. <laughs> uh, this cave is something I've been working on the last few days. Did a bit of live streaming. I dug out this whole cave. It's not done yet. <laughs> I don't honestly don't know why I started doing this. Um, I actually just decided I wanted to dig out a giant cave. Uh, dome is kind of the most natural shape, so it's in kind of a dome shape, but I didn't take any any pains to make it too too uh, spherical or anything. You can see it's kind of a little lopsided in some in some areas. I've got a little catwalk over here so I can walk around the top. Um. <laughs> so this is kind of what I've been what I've been working on. Um, I've gone through a lot of pickaxes. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting there. I'm, I think I'm about done. Um, I, I do. I came up with a plan for the cave. Uh, I guess the original idea I had with the cave. Well, maybe I'll talk about that in a moment. First, let me show you what I'm doing with the, uh, in order to mine the cave out. Of course, I have a, a beacon you can see here. It's down in my little supply room. Uh, I'm under a desert area. Uh, we got a little supply room. Uh, you can see I've been mining a lot of cobblestone. I actually smelted up, uh, smelted up some stone, so I have a double chest full of stone. But a lot of cobblestone. Um, there's some stuff here, uh, kind of dirt and whatever. <laughs> These chests are mostly full. Here are the actual like valuable things. I do also have this wall of furnaces that is mostly full with smelted iron that I've gotten from digging out this entire giant cave thingy. Um, but it's it's not so bad because this, this beacon is haste 2, um, this pickaxe, the butter knife mark 4 has efficiency 5, and of course if you have a haste 2 efficiency 5 uh, situation going on, you can kind of rip right through <laughs> rip right through blocks. So it's pretty fast to do this. I've been uh, basically just going two layers at a time and leaving behind torches as I go. I've been mining up all the coal with a fortune pick, so I do have two pickaxes on my hotbar because of that. Um, and uh, whenever my butter knife, which I call the butter knife because it just goes right through stone, just like butter, like a hot knife and butter. Anyway, <laughs> it's a saying. Um, I've been repairing it, and this is the this is the fourth pick. Uh, of course, with the new enchanting mechanics, uh, it becomes exponentially more expensive to repair pickaxes over time. So you can only repair them something like five or six times before it becomes too expensive and you have to, uh, and you have to, well, basically discard the pick. There's just nothing you can do to repair it. So I'm actually about done with this pickaxe. I think it can be repaired one more time. Should be 33 levels to repair it. So um, I don't have that many levels, and since also this is the last time I'm going to be able to repair this pick, um, I need to probably enchant some more picks. So in a moment here, once I've kind of exhausted this this pickaxe, I am going to um, go over to the ends and utilize the Enderman farm there, and we're gonna. Do a little bit of enchanting. This pick is almost done. I got. I got to be careful. See, it's almost out now. Has 58 durability. Of course, with unbreaking, you can actually. Like, I just killed like maybe 30 blocks, but it only took out eight durability. So you can go a little bit over. Uh, actually, has about probably 200, 250 blocks of um, durability left uh, when it hits that empty kind of empty damage bar. Okay, but I, I don't want to mine anymore because I don't want to accidentally break it. Uh, I've actually been pretty lucky I haven't accidentally, or I don't know if it's lucky, but I've been, I guess I've been attentive enough that I haven't broken any picks. I don't really know why I'm storing up all this cobble. In fact, I'm kind of like out of chest space here. Is there anything? <laughs> Look at all these, all this stuff I've gotten. Here's everything. Uh, well, I've been putting my like non-cobblestone stuff in chests. I might just have to... Hmm. Well, let me see what I have in here. Okay. Well, I do have some chests, so maybe I'll put down some more, a couple more chests. Um, but I guess I'll probably stop caring, caring so much about uh, 
uh, cobblestone from now on because I really have more than I will need for a very long time. Oops. And get rid of that, get rid of that. Alright. And just gotta make sure everything's organized. But I do need to get out of here. I this pickaxe is done. Let's actually move it off my hotbar. I wanna make sure that when I go to the end though, I'll have everything I need. Efficiency four book, good. I have some diamonds, so I can uh I'll be able to make a few pickaxes. I'm not sure this is enough for my purposes. I do have one here. Let's just make sure, let's see what the, the repair requirement is right now on this. Yeah, 33. So, I'm going to head over to the end. And while I'm on my way to the end, I will talk about, uh, actually, my original goal. Oh, get away, get away. Aha. My original goal for this, uh, this cave. So, the thought process I had was, I really like making Minecraft custom maps, but and and it would be cool to make one in survival, but there are some pretty big obstacles to making custom maps in survival Minecraft. Uh, I think the 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 kind of the the thought process I had was a lot of the best games either just like require a lot of equipment, so you get like a kit with you know all these custom enchantments and potions, and that's kind of a pain to replenish. You know, especially if you're talking about having a bunch of diamond gear and whatever. Uh, so some of them have kits, some of them have uh, basically allow you to place or destroy blocks. That's obviously a pain to reset as well. And so, and also a lot of the games that you just play in survival. Mic oh wait, it's over here. I <laughs> I haven't played in a while, so uh, I I sometimes forget where things are. So we're going off to the to the stronghold, but um, yeah, a lot of the games don't have a lot of re replayability. You get you know some basic gear, maybe some leather armor and and uh, you know stone sword, and that stuff's easy enough to replenish. But it gets a little bit old because every game is kind of you know you have the same gear and you're facing the same opponents. You can't place or destroy blocks, so it's just about combat. And but it's just very very much the same so I guess the idea I had was what if you threw in a lot of mobs you know had some PvE element to it that would and you had mo random mob spawns that would change each time and so that's kind of the idea with the cave was well if I dig out a giant okay we're gonna have to turn down some sounds here uh, if, you, if you build a giant underground area you build a giant underground area, mobs are going to spawn there, especially if it's dark, obviously. Um, and and especially since we've lit up a lot of the underground caves. So anywhere where it's dark, mobs are very, very likely to spawn in the Minecraft server. And so I kind of just was thinking, well, maybe I'll turn this somehow into a PvE slash PvP arena. So you fight other players, but there's mobs that you have to contend with as well. And, but I wasn't really sure how I was going to do that or if that was even really feasible. And, but I, I think I've come up with an idea for how to do it. And it involves basically using droppers or dispensers to dispense items through the floor. And one of the bigger problems with, with this sort of thing is if you have redstone that's, a, that's, uh, that's, if you, if you're using redstone and it's close to the surface, any creeper explosion will potentially just destroy the redstone. Which means you can't really have redstone in the arena if you're using random uh, or just you know the default Minecraft mob spawning algorithm. So of course there will be creepers. So, uh, but if I have dispensers way underground, and I'll show you this later, if I have dispensers way underground, then it they can actually dispense through the ground through you know ten blocks of of, of stone and just have those blocks pop up um, in the arena. So I, my plan is basically to, to dig out this cave, uh, decorate it with some maybe like cool ruins or... Um, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to decorate it. But make it into basically a PvP slash PvE arena. And then add in some droppers underneath the whole arena so that at the beginning of the game we can kind of drop some like very basic gear or maybe even not necessarily gear, but just things you can use to craft, say, swords or armor or bows, that sort of stuff. 
and and uh, and you enter the arena without anything, any gear or anything. And you just have to find uh, items on the grounds in order to be able to, you know, accomplish anything. That's kind of the idea. Um, also, uh, if it's a dark cave, obviously that's not going to make for very good video. So I think I'm going to have to have a bunch of night vision potions, but that should take care of that aspect. And so you just like grab a couple night vision potions when you enter the arena, and uh, so what do I need? 33 levels. And, and anyway, just a couple night vision potions is all you get. Otherwise, you're naked, and you just have to go try and find gear, fight off mobs. Of course, you're going to have to try and explore the arena and find your gear while without you having any equipment in the first place. So that's definitely a difficulty. All right, 33 inch, 33 levels. Maybe I should do this at the end, actually. Um, because you don't use up as many levels. Hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah, actually, let's do let's do an enchantment first, I guess, because I, I can. Um, okay, let's just grab all this stuff. Because, well, let's see what it is. Unbreaking three. Hope, so what I'm looking for here is unbreaking three efficiency four because. What I want is Efficiency 5 on Breaking 3. If it has Fortune or Silk Touch, that's going to make it a lot more expensive to repair, which means I get fewer repairs, which is bad. Um, so yeah, mostly just looking for Efficiency 4 on Breaking 3. Let's see what we get. Yeah, see this is what I'm talking about. Oh, this is also Efficiency 3. So this pickaxe is basically worthless. Uh, doesn't even have Fortune 3, it has Fortune 2. So this is bad. It's not what I wanted. Um, but I do have, let's see, let me see how many diamonds I can actually get out of this. And let me also very carefully throw out some ender pearls. Okay, those are a little bit, alright. <laughs> I didn't, I just, yeah, I gotta be careful not to accidentally uh, throw them off the edge there, obviously. Alright, let's see how many diamonds I can get here. 11, 13, oh, okay, 18. So that, wow, that was actually a really good haul. That was three diamonds per ore, I think. Maybe a little bit less. Uh, and then... Oops. Let's craft a bunch of pickaxes. Might as well. Alright, there's four pickaxes. So let's see what the next enchantment's going to be here. I'm breaking three. Alright, it's worth a shot. Cross your fingers. Well... I mean, this is a good pick, but it's not what I was looking for, so I'll probably have to keep going and do my repairs. Anyway, that's kind of the idea of what I want to do with the uh, with the cave, and we'll, we'll try and get to some of that in this episode. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a probably a long time in the making. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue with this enchanting stuff, and we'll get back. I'm breaking three. That's what it says here. Uh, Okay, and this one is efficiency four. Oh. So I think I'm about done with the general shape of the cave. Uh, I tried to sculpt the landscape so that it looked more like a natural landscape than something I dug out. But of course I'm going to be adding a lot of stuff to this, probably some like waterfalls and rivers and um, maybe some well, definitely some ruins um, that are that are you know made of like stone brick and cracked stone brick and mossy stone brick and all that sort of stuff. So this is just sort of what I've done. Uh, there were a few caves left in here, so uh, I I utilized what I could. For instance, this was just one of the caves that was already here, and it's just like just a little bit underground tunnel. <clears throat> so that's kind of cool. Adds a little bit of uh, dimen third dimensionality to the whole thing. Of course, there are some caves that aren't really useful. Um, here's one I'm going to leave a little bit of in. So you go under here and you can come back out here. But it also has a path that goes down here. And so this is a good opportunity to show you some of the things I was talking about. Ooh, diamonds. <laughs> um, so first of all, let me show you what I was talking about with the uh, droppers. So I've got some droppers in my inventory. Let's actually... Uh, my inventory is so full. Okay, uh, let's put a stone right here. 
Oh, that's not a stone. <clears throat> Alright, stone right here and a dropper right there. And then I'm going to fill in this space above the dropper. So now this dropper is just pointed up into basically solid ground. Um, it's solid ground all the way up to, well, the surface of the cave. So let's put some coal in here. And here's why I have that button. And let's just go ahead and press it. One, two, three times. This area right here, by the way, is where I'm going to put all the droppers. I'm going to, we're at Y equals 11 right now. And that's intentional because Y11 is where you're likely to find diamonds. So, I guess I might as well just mine these out. Two, six, eight. All right, that was a good haul. Just make sure there's no more. Now, I do need to make sure that <clears throat> I am filling in anything that I mine. I just want this, like, too tall area. Uh, anything on the ground I want to fill in so that I can place down all the redstone that I'll need. And anything above the ground I want to fill in. Ooh, we'll actually grab this stuff. Um, anything above the ground I want to fill in so that any dispensers that I pl or droppers that I place will have solid ground to go through. Um, so that it it does actually reach the surface. So we placed we uh, <clears throat> we dropped three coal into the ground. Wait, <laughs> that's a dead end. Getting lost here. We dropped three coal into the ground upwards. Dropping is kind of a weird word when it's going upwards. <clears throat> Let's see. So there's three coal, and you can see they did spread out a little bit. Um, they didn't all go to the same place. They would have stacked up if they had all gone to the same place. So that's just an artifact of the fact that when a dispenser dispenses, there's a bit of a random variance in kind of which direction. It doesn't always just it doesn't go straight up. Kind of like tilts various directions, and so it it maintains that velocity as it goes up through the ground. But here we go. So uh, that's actually kind of cool because it means that the items won't be in the exact same spot every time. And yeah, so that's that's my general plan. So let's go back down to that cave. And <clears throat> so I'm gonna keep uh, I'm gonna keep speed mining basically until I have the in entire area under the cave speed mined out. And I this is like pretty familiar, right? This is what I've been doing in the cave, but I'm just doing it underneath. Um, but I'll have a nice flat area where I can place lots of droppers, and hopefully I'll get some more diamonds while I'm down here, because I actually did use up a lot of diamonds on all the pickaxes that I needed in order to uh, repair the pickaxes and craft, you know, new pack pickaxes and stuff like that. So anyway, um, oh, I ran out of torches. Ah! Okay, so I just need to make sure I repair that. It's not important that there are no bubbles underground, but it is important that uh, above this, this, uh, okay, still don't have torches. Let's actually craft those. Uh, it is important that there's no bubbles above this too tall staging area, because if there are, that means that items will get stuck in there if I place droppers underneath the bubble. Because imagine if there was a bubble uh, uh, above this dropper, the item wouldn't continue upward, it would just stop because it was on solid ground. The items only continue to traveling upwards if they're kind of in solid blocks and all and all six blocks in all directions are also solid. So that's kind of the prerequisite. So if there's any bubbles, it's no good. And that means that like I, this sort of cave, you recall this is the cave that I came in on. All right, we can exit through here or here. Uh, I need to make sure that I close off this stuff and that there aren't bubbles because any droppers that I place under this will um, will not work. So basically what I need to end up doing is is something like this where I actually am just gonna have to fill in the entire cave solid and luckily I stored up a lot of cobblestone so it shouldn't be a problem having all the materials. It will take a bit of time though and so that's gonna that's gonna be there's, a, there's gonna be a lot of time-consuming parts of this project that are just kinda grindy and this is definitely this is definitely one of them, although I think there aren't too many leftover caves after all the work I've done to clear out the uh, after all the work I've done to just just dig out the cave. Um, several of the caves that there were, I've already filled in, uh, and there also were some caves that I just left in, and I'm not going to worry about trying to fill them in. But I do need to make sure it's entirely solid ground under the arena, otherwise, like I said, just all the items are going to get kind of caught up. Uh, where do I stop? So it stops over there. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in anything that can't be seen. I'm going to fill in with, um, 
with cobblestone here. Oh, there's this area up here. I think I think some people did some mining before I got here. Obviously, this is um, this area that we're in right now is inside where the world border was when season five started, and so there people just like went nuts. <laughs> there just was not a lot of area to mine, so people basically scoured everything, and so th there are like little diggy tunnels in various parts of the area here where you would not normally expect them to be. I'm sure I'll run into lots of lots of branch mines while I'm speed mining down uh, down at y equals 11. Let's see, I'm almost there um, because, like I said, that's uh, that's where people. And I might actually have to fill in a bunch of branch mines because some people branch mine at y equals 11, some people branch mine at y equals 12, and those people that do it at 12, um, their their tunnel is like the top half of their tunnel, this this part of their tunnel, is going to be above the area where I need this, the droppers to drop into. So, all right, we're almost done with this part, I just wanted to kind of show you what the process is. Obviously, I'm going to be grinding a lot on this, and uh, uh, you guys don't need to watch that, but, <laughs> but I just wanted to show you what the basic process was. Um, a lot of this is just, I'm showing it to you, so that if you want to take on a similar project, you can do that. So here I'm using stone, um, so that if there is a creeper explosion somewhere around here, then it won't expose cobblestone, or it's less likely to expose cobblestone. But now at this point, I'm just going to try and make it look natural, and that's not bad. So here we go. And uh, now no one will ever know that there was a little cave tunnel there. Everything looks good. And <clears throat> so, yep, that's that's pretty much the plan. Uh, so underground, I'm going to build. I'm going to dig out a giant area. There's going to be a lot of droppers to place, and I'm going to have to fill them up with a lot of supplies. Supplies are going to be things like sticks and planks with which you could use to craft um, craft like swords. Uh, I think I want to put maybe leather in there and arrows, <coughs> maybe strings as well so that you can craft bows. The problem is I can't just put finished armor in here, or I can, but it... It's not very effective if I want this to be really reusable. Because imagine I had like you know a bunch of coal, a bunch of wood, a bunch of whatever, and then one of the spots is armor. That means there's a one in nine chance that that armor is going to get dispensed, and then there's just nothing else there because armor doesn't stack. So unfortunately, because it doesn't stack, it, it just doesn't make a very good. Um, in terms of sustainability, it doesn't make uh, for a very good um, dropper dropper content for this for this game that I'm thinking of making. Uh, I have some ideas for how I want to organize kind of the game aspects of it, as in like, how do you enter the arena, how do you uh, how do you know where to go, when do you, when do you start the game, what happens when you start the game, that sort of stuff. But I'll probably leave that to a future episode. But I just wanted to show you eh, mostly what what I'm what I'm doing right now and what the plan is to get started. I, I there's a lot that I still haven't planned out. I don't know if I showed you this part earlier. This right here <laughs> I think I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the episode, but this is where this is where uh, there used to be a spawner right here. I actually got really lucky when I was initially. Oh right, there's the beacon right there. Well, anyway, initially when I was coming down, I dug straight down and I happened to hit this dungeon, and that made me ecstatic because that meant that there was going to be a dungeon just right in the middle of my uh, my cave, which would have been a really cool th feature for a PVE arena, obviously. Um, Arcus came on during a live stream and he, he wanted to help me out <laughs> and he came down here and there was a creeper there was just like a, one solitary creeper and unfortunately he couldn't kill it in time and it, and it blew up the spawner so I don't blame Arcus but I kind of blame Arcus <laughs> the thing is it's just like there's really no reason to go down here, because, you know, all the chests are up here, the beacons up here. There's really no reason to go down here unless you just want to check out the spawner. And there's only, you only really want to do that once, because once you see the spawner, there's no reason to come down here again. So just the one time that he happened to come down here, there was a creeper. Very bad luck. No, I, I really don't blame him, though. But I might do something uh, to, uh... well, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is pretty much the progress that I've got for you right now. And I'm going to be working on this, but I will give you up more updates as they come. Um, but I think that will do it for this episode on Minecraft server. That's about it. Thanks for watching.